Hello everybody and uh, welcome to a video made by me. Uh, today I will be showing you how to tune a car for in Forza Horizon 2. <clears throat> uh, so first we're going to need a car though. Of course. Hey, how's things? Um don't know what I want though. I think I do know. Way, way down. It's still Plymouth, right? No. Never mind. Oh, wait, yes, it is. I don't want that one. I was hoping they had the Barracuda. That'll work. <clears throat> I don't exactly want to generally paint job though. Not right now. Let's just go. Yes, I want to leave the auto show. All right, Dude, so come on in. How can I help? Don't want to go to tuning, I want to go upgrades. Now first, to tune a car you need to have tuning parts on. It's kind of a given, right? So anything that can be adjusted, we will throw on there. And let's throw it up as to the top of C class. Something tells me that's gonna jump it over. Yep. Hmm. Vermont? Yeah, I think I do. But then we have to drop these way down. Nope. You go off. You go back on. Um. Yeah, let's go with the A little tip is the rim size actually does affect the way the cars handle. The bigger the rims, it's the smaller the sidewall of the tire means there's the sidewall compresses less and gives it more grip. But once the tires do lose traction, they slide a lot easier. I don't really want 
want to throw any arrow on, especially because it's a lower class car. When you get in the higher classes, it's more necessary. Not so much right now, though. Can I put in this? Nope. I never even thought about weight reduction. Yeah, let's do that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this car is a full frame. So it's not exactly necessary to reinforce the chassis does help but not as much as it would if on a uh, newer unibody car when you're upgrading the engine I'd recommend going for parts that add horsepower and decrease weight at the same time so things like your intake your uh, air filter, your exhaust, your valves, pistons, your flywheel, not so much. And oil and cooling and intercooler are almost never put them on because they add more weight than they do horsepower. It gives a neg negative effect. And also, while I'm here, carburetors usually don't help either because they're heavier. They weigh more than the horsepower you get from them. Same idea there. Ooh. No, actually, while I remember, again, so look at the, your weight of your car and your uh, front percent weight. Those are important numbers. 35, 62, and 54%. All right, so before you go anywhere, you can go and tune some parts of your car now to give a base tune. I do have formulas for these. It'd be the anti roll bar springs and damping. So for your anti I do have I have formulas for these, so, like I said, for a base tune. So what you'd want to do for your anti roll bars is you want to take forty, it's your max value um, sway bar value. And then you want to multiply that by the percent weight. It's fifty four percent as a decimal, so 0.54. And then gives you 21.6. Now you wanna subtract that 21.6 from 40, and then add your minimum spring um, sway bar value, which is one. So then 40 minus 21.6 plus one. Gives you 19.4. And do the same thing with the rear, except because you have 54% weight in the front, that means you have 46% weight in the back. So then you do 40 times 0.46. Yeah, eighteen point four. So forty minus eighteen point four plus one is twenty two point six. And you round it to the closest you can because six is closer. Yeah, you know how to round. Now for the springs. What I did was I took the weight of the car, in this case it's 
35.62 and then I multiplied that by the percent weight so it's as a decimal so as so 35.62 times 0.54 gives you and then divide that by 2 because there's two springs per end of the car, right? So it's 961, 74, so 961 and a half. And same for the back. Thirty-five sixty-two times point four six divided by two is eight nineteen and a half. Now your right height, I'd go as low as you can, and then just four notches up from that so 7.5 be 7.9 right and 6.9 now your uh, rebound stiffness I did your maximum stiffness so 13 times percent weight plus your minimum stiffness one right gave me eight for the front and then I got 13 times 0.46 plus one gave me seven. Now for the bump stiffness, I just went about 70% of the rebound. So eight times 0.7 is 5.6. Seven times 0.7 is 0.49 or 4.9. And then if you want you can do your gearing before you go anywhere too. Oh, you what you want is your gears to be a nice curve. This one's already not too bad, but for demonstration purposes I'll modify it. So you start at second. And then just kinda get a nice curve going from there. gonna get this give me a little more accelerate there we go a bit better no it's not it takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of time If you want, you can go and bring your acceleration up, see the curve a little bit better. It's not too, too bad. Then I like to make my sixth gear just touch just the end of the graph there. And from there, I go and kind of look at my zero to 60 and my top speed, and I try to 
get a happy medium, see what works best. So you want a lower 0 to 60 and a higher top speed. Notice my 0 to 60 was holding, but I'm still getting more top speed, so. Granted, there's no way you're going to hit your top speed on this map anyway, short of the highway. But. I think I'll stick with right about there for my gearing. Now we've got those. Arrow can't touch brakes. That leaves brakes, differential, alignment, and tires. Right? So now we can apply that and then go and test drive it. Before you do anything that you're going to want to look at your telemetry but you want your tires warm before you do anything so just get them warm real quick Uh, I am tuning for racing, by the way. I'll have another um, tutorial on how to drift tune up later. Okay, so now you open up your telemetry and then you want to go to your tires, your heat. So apparently my fronts are still cold on the uh, inside. Okay, so when you're racing you want your tire temperature between 180 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit with no more than about 20 degrees left to right in one tire and 25 degrees front to back on two tires. So 
so right now my and you always want your inside colder than your outside hotter than your inside sorry you want your inside hotter than your outside apparently I don't have that for obvious reasons though okay so now I'm just gonna set up my map again drive down here turn around Slap when it is safe to do so No. Didn't break hard enough. Oops. Okay, so my outsides are clearly hotter than my inside. So before I go any farther, I'm gonna go to Tune Car. And adjust my camber. I'm going to go with negative 1.8 on the rear and negative 2 point, or no, negative 2.4 on the front and 1.8 on the rear. And this is because your back tires, they don't turn, so they don't need quite as much camber. Um, while I'm here, you're, you can adjust your toe too. You, you typically you'd want toe out in the front and toe rear on the back. And anything, you can go any up to about 0.5. And anything more than that, it creates... And that's, that's bad. Slows you down. I'm, and the closer you get to zero, the better, as far as straight line speed goes. So I'm going to go about 0.2. That way I can turn slightly better. Feel free to play around with it yourself. Get your own feel for it. Now, caster, this is, the way I, was told this when I first got into tuning is like picture a chopper motorcycle which would have high caster versus a like shopping cart which where the front wheels would have negative caster it's all like it's where the tire sits in relation to the top of its uh pivot point I guess so like um, the higher your caster, the more your tire is going to roll from side to side as, a, as it turns. It kind of, it helps with balancing the front uh, heat. But, and it's good in straight line stability, but it's not so good in like low speed cornering. So I'm going to go with about, I like to go around 6 degrees. I'll apply that. Then I'll, let's try this out a little bit more. Okay. 
And you can see it's already helping. I need bigger tires on my the front. But I can't do anything. Okay, so I need to adjust my uh, camber a little bit more in the front and back, actually. I have too much. You have arrived at your destination. Thank you, Anna. So now my, I want to go in alignment. Okay, so let's drop that down about 0.4 degrees, front and rear. And try that out. All right, okay, so I've managed to get it. My difference between my inner and outer tires about 20 degrees and I'm only at like about 10 degrees front to back sometimes 15 to 20 it was at negative 1.5 and negative 0 0.9 all right Oops, I want I want to keep that. Now for tires, when your tires are warm, you want them between 32 and 34 pounds. So we'll start off with about 28 degrees front and rear, or 28 pounds, sorry. Now these numbers are factual, like actual numbers from Pirelli, back when Forza 4, or when Turn 10 used Pirelli as their tire company in Forza 4. And any, that 220 degrees Fahrenheit I was talking about, anything over that and the tires want to lose grip more, so... Okay, anyways, we'll start there. And then, so you want to switch over to your tires. And then... Ok, 
Okay, so my fronts are good. I'm holding about 32 pounds. Get off the dirt. I need to, looks like I have to increase my uh, back tire pressure by about half a pound. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now we've done gearing, done tires, done alignment, sway bar, springs, damping, brakes and differential. Those should probably be tuned on a highway or somewhere else with a long stretch. But for now, I'm just going to finish off my tires. Okay, so I'm at there. My tires are heating up and getting even tire pressure. So now. Uh, yeah, let's do brakes now. So I'm going to fast travel to an area where there's a straighter stretch, like right here would be perfect. And I can fast travel and it doesn't cost me a thing. So a bonus. And I'll wait till it stops raining. So I'll... Okay, so we're actually doing this backwards. Your, uh, when it says your rear, that means that it's actually putting the braking balance, braking force towards the front. So what you want to do. If you want to put more brakes, braking force towards the back, you want to set the slider more towards the front. So let's try 60% now. Okay, so that's, apparently we're going with zero. Normally, I would run 80 and 40. Or, no, for racing, I'd run 60 and 10. But apparently I'm going to change that. <laughs> Anyways, for deceleration, you want to have a run up, and then you want to brake as hard as you can. And then you want your deceleration rate to be as high as possible without your car going sideways. Granted, it shouldn't do that at all now because we adjusted the brakes. But we'll try that. Okay, that was my doing there. But I think that's good.
you know, if you're not so, yeah. If you're not happy with those settings there, I would recommend about 60 degrees or 60% acceleration and 10% deceleration for um, racing. Now, I'll go through these again. So if you want, you can build this tune yourself. And I, if I can, I will also put it up in a tuning area. I can't, I don't know if this game has it or not. I haven't checked. So there. Anyways, that's how to do tune a car for circuit racing. I thank you very much for watching. Like, share, rate, subscribe, whatever. And I'll see you next time. You leveled up.